After moving to Detroit about two years ago, I got really into rock climbing. And while climbing in the gym is fun, nothing beats climbing real rock. The nearest outdoor climbing area in southern Michigan is two hours away, offering just a handful of sandstone routes along a river. It leaves a lot to be desired. But that all changed when I discovered the Red River Gorge. Renowned as a climber's paradise, it's located about six hours south of Detroit. Intrigued by its reputation, I organized a trip with my close friends and my girlfriend. We planned out the ultimate climbing trip, securing a campsite and setting aside two full days to climb and explore the Red River Gorge. This turned out to be an extraordinary adventure, full of awesome climbs, backcountry camping, and a few hilarious mishaps. And this is the story of that trip. So is like dating me and going on a trip with me good or nah? Jerry's out. Our adventure began early on Friday, March 29th. One of the perks of working at GM is getting Good Friday and Easter Monday off, giving us the perfect opportunity for a longer trip without using up any vacation days. The group split into three cars. My car had Joe, making a return for my Pictured Rocks video, George, my coworker and a seasoned climber of the red, and Eli, eager for his first trip with us. In Colin's car, who you will recognize since he has been in almost every one of my videos, were our friends Eric, Nate, and Selena, a friend who, after nearly two years of climbing with me, was finally making her debut in one of my videos. Jessie, my girlfriend, drove separately. She's been recovering from a pretty hardcore foot surgery, and we met because I was impressed by her climbing with one foot at the gym. She's also training to be an orthopedic surgeon, which is rad. This trip was our first together, making it even more exciting. The drive to the Red took us through the state of Ohio. After four hours, we stopped in Cincinnati for breakfast. It's a first time visit for me and the food was absolutely amazing. With the Red just two hours away, we were all eager to start climbing, but life loves throwing curveballs. Just short of our destination, my Corolla's tire exploded, right as I was marveling at how smoothly our trip was going. Another issue was that my car, for some reason, didn't have a spare tire or a wrench. No fucking spare, thank you for <laughs> So we were in a bind. Luckily, Jesse had a spare and Colin had the right wrench, turning what could have been a major setback into a manageable detour, resolved by our collective engineering and surgical skills. We eventually reached a tire shop and snagged the last compatible tire they had in stock. How are you feeling, Quinn? I feel good. We made it to the campsite. Good job. The other tires didn't explode. True. Uh, we got to test out our new tire on a nice dirt road. Yeah, that did pretty well. And now we're at the campsite. This delay meant missing our planned afternoon climb, but we made the most of it, setting up camp and enjoying a relaxing evening with hot dogs and s'mores. What's up, Joe? How's your chair doing? Good. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. A little hot in there? It's high general. Damn. He's so buff. We got Mr. Nate Lee, first try, knife throw. Oh, that's close. Not on video. <laughs> Despite the curveball, we had made it, and our adventure at the Red was finally beginning. Spicy. <laughs> Why is it spicy? <laughs> I don't remember what I usually say in the mornings. I think last time I said Colin was a bastard. I... If you call me a bastard. <laughs> I'm tempted, actually. Saturday morning and Quinn's about to try to call me a bastard. Let's see how this works. It's kind of my favorite word. I really like you, but 
You kind of a bastard. Ow. <laughs> we got an early start with breakfast on day two, and I always love to see what everyone brings for food on these trips, but Eli's choice was something else. A block of cheese isn't a very balanced breakfast. Well, it is if you have an egg. <laughs> so gross. Those don't even go together. Despite getting an early start, we left camp later than we intended. We woke up at 7. We still haven't left. Wait, are we late? Where's Colin? Where's Colin and Eric? At the car. At the car. Oh, are you shaming me right now? <laughs> Where are we? Not at the car. Not at the car. We didn't get on the road until 9 a.m. And I'm gonna take responsibility here and say it was probably because I wasted a ton of time ribbing Nate and Colin. Cause look at that chisel jaw. Hey, don't hide that chisel jaw. It's my content, damn it. So you got you got a bunch of people wearing like actual gear they're supposed to be wearing, and then you got Nate, who's just shirtless for no reason. In shorts. Why are you not wearing clothes? <laughs> Our spot for the day was Mirror Valley, which sits right at the heart of the red. On the way there, we made a quick water stop at Miguel's, which is a pizza place that also serves as a central hub for the climbers of the red. But I'll cover more on that later. We finally made it to Mirror Valley around 10 a.m., and from there we started on our hike down to the valley floor, which is all part of the adventure. I love hiking, but I was just excited to get climbing. After we got down into the valley, we headed straight for Johnny's Wall. We set up two routes, a 5'8 called Thanks Holly and a 5'9 called Two Chicken Butts. George and Jesse were kind enough to lead these routes and set up top ropes for the rest of us to climb them. Come on, Jesse. Nice. Now, my only real experience climbing outdoors is from bouldering, and this was my first time doing ropes outside the gym. Though I am a pretty decent climber, I was glad we were able to warm up on some easier routes so I could get back into the groove of climbing outside. Starting on Thanks Holly, I needed to rely on good foot placement so I could take the weight off my arms and feel around for my next good hold. I think this is one of the biggest differences between climbing in the gym and climbing outdoors. Your route is not clearly marked and it's up to you to find the proper beta to send it. Nice and easy, big boy. Two chicken butts was pretty similar. It just had a lot more hard moves in it that you needed to rely on your strength for. I'm up here at the top of two chicken butts and thanks Holly with Nathaniel Lee. It's pretty sick. <laughs> After we finished up the climbs at Johnny's Wall, we packed up and we moved over to Tectonic Wall. Where we climbed Tall Cool One, a 5'9", and Plate Tectonics, a 5'10A. Tall Cool One was one of my favorite climbs of this trip. The beta required a lot of strong footwork and interesting moves to send it. I also had my first fall of the day on it because I made a dynamic move to a jug that was in fact not a jug. Thing is like a Boy. Plate tectonics looked easy, but it had a lot of false jugs. I got pretty pumped on it because I would reach for a hold only to find out that it wasn't good and I needed to quickly pivot to a new one, which wasted some energy. I needed to spend a lot more time scoping out the holds rather than just blindly throwing to them and hoping for the best. We spent most of the afternoon at Tectonic Wall and only had time for one more route before we went to dinner, so we ventured deeper into the valley to an area called the Boneyard. We're going to Boneyard. We're going to Boneyard, baby! I don't know which way to Mordor. <laughs> Here we were greeted with massive 70 to 80 foot walls. Nate took the lead on a route called Cinderella, which was a 5'9 plus, and he made it look easy. I later found out that it was in fact not easy, and the holes were mostly crimps all the way up. I was able to find a decent amount of rest drops, but I was exhausted by the time I reached the top. It was also the highest climb I've ever completed at 80 feet. After a full day of climbing, the group was pretty exhausted. Was this your first day ever outdoor climbing? Yes. And how'd it go? 
imagine it was hard, man. Snake this long it, was, it was not easy. When you say hard, what was the hardest part about it? Just like having to find <laughs> the holds, not having them be like giant plastic <laughs> things that you can like, no, oh, that's I'm my next hold, you know? Just like having to like test everything, stay up there for a really long time, feeling everything out. The footholds were always kind of shit <laughs> as well. But um, no, it was fun though. It was time. Oh, K. Campers, let's get out of here. Oh my god. All right, Joe, just walk. I'm walking. One foot in front of the other, buddy. Come on. We had to hike back out of the valley, and then we were going to a place called Red Point for dinner, which was some of the best barbecue I've ever had. All things considered, I think it was a very successful first day, and I was more than excited for the next day of climbing. Oh, it's going to be such good B-roll. <laughs> We were up by 7 a.m. on Easter Sunday, fresh after a night of rain. With Jesse needing to head back to Detroit by the afternoon, we aimed to hit the crag early. However, Colin and Eric had other plans, whipping up the most elaborate breakfast I've ever seen on a trip. French toast with off-brand Oreo butter. A real backcountry delicacy. Do you think Colin's a good chef? I think Colin oh. can chef. Yes. You think Colin can chef, but he's not a good chef? Well, do I think he's gonna go into a five-star restaurant? No. We finally left camp by 9.30, heading to Fantasia Wall. The drive took us through Nada Tunnel, a one-lane tunnel carved through a mountain, opening to a vast valley, a scenic start to our day. Are you ready to climb? Not ready. <laughs> feel good today. Yeah. Fantasia was a breath of fresh air compared to Mere Valley. Right off the main road with an easy approach and no drone restrictions. Perfect for filming. We started with Lord of the Flies, a 5'8 that was my first attempt at leading outdoors. It was nerve wracking, but decent footholds and plenty of good handholds made it an ideal warm up. Next was Pogue Ethics, a tricky 5.9 plus. The climb required creative route finding and energy conservation through multiple traverses. It's a well exposed wall which allowed us to get some great drone footage up close. We ended the day with Creature Feature. Rated 5.9, the start was brutally tough. 
With a traverse into a cave and almost no footholds and minimal handholds requiring a campus move onto the face. The rest of the route was a breeze, which is probably why it's still rated 5.9, but it felt a lot tougher than that. Despite our initial plans to be finished climbing by 12 o'clock, we didn't end up leaving Fantasia until 3.30, which meant Jesse wasn't going to be getting back to Detroit until midnight, which was a bummer. I helped her pack up and we said goodbye. Alright kids, Jesse's taking off. <laughs> For dinner on our final night we went to Miguel's Pizza, a staple of the Red River Gorge climbing community. Since the 1980s, Miguel's has evolved from a simple pizzeria into a vibrant hub where climbers congregate. The pizza is pretty solid, and also pretty messy, exactly what we needed after a full day of climbing. I also got my own Miguel shirt, which feels like a rite of passage in the climbing community. I think it looks good. Miguel's is an integral part of the Red River Gorge experience, making it the perfect spot to wrap up our trip. We went to bed early on day three, eager to start the next morning before sunrise for a final hike before heading back to Michigan. Good morning, Jansen. You ready for your sunrise hike? We packed up camp under the cover of darkness and set off in the early hours to Gray's Arch. It is currently 6.45 a.m. and I'm walking my big pack out to the car from camp. We're going on a sunrise hike and we packed up real early and I really hope it's worth it because I'm really tired. <laughs> As we sat under the massive structure with the sun rising above us, I reflected on the incredible journey we had. These adventures with my friends have profoundly changed my life. I love making these videos and sharing them with all of you. If you enjoy what you see and want to see more, please consider subscribing. I'm still working to establish an audience and every bit of support helps. Thank you for watching.